Hi folks, uh, today we're going to start working on some mechanisms uh, of the Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle is, of course, uh, multiple different reactions that are going to take acetyl-CoA and break it into two CO2s, um, and it's going to be, essentially, OAA is going to be neutral in that process. It's also going to generate three NADHs and a GTP and a coenzyme Q reduced uh, for use in the electron transport chain. So the first one we're going to talk about today uh, is going to be citrate synthase. Citrate synthase, remember, takes acetyl-CoA and draw it like this, uh, and oxaloacetate, and it makes them into citrate. And this is a rate controlling step for this uh, reaction, or for the cycle. Um, this com combination of acetyl-CoA and OAA um, also re results in the uh, liberation of coenzyme A by hydrolysis. So we end up uh, cleaving that off, um, and because CoA is a high, en uh, high energy intermediate, this is not typically reversed. We don't typically cleave citrate back into OAA and acetyl-CoA, though that's not necessarily true. Um, but in the Krebs cycle, the way we run it, it typically does only run one way. But something I want to point out with that is the fact that the Krebs cycle is not considered a can catabolic or anabolic pathway. It's actually considered amphibolic, which means that uh, you can use it to break things down in catabolic and make energy out of them, or it can run anabolic uh, and build things up, right? So we can make citrate for fatty acid synthesis. We can uh, make amino acids out of alpha-ketoglutarate or fumarate or uh, oxaloacetate through the cycle, right? And so this means that it can run either way. It's it, uh, the cycle, the wheel, just like a wheel can reverse or go forward, uh, the same kind of thing can happen here for the Krebs cycle. So can do both. And so remember that, uh, that this is possible, right? And so we can technically do this. Um, though in Krebs cycle, the way we typically run it for, is a catabolic pathway, it is not reversible. And this is the rate determining step for the, for the pathway. Okay? Um, and so um, keep in mind that that's what's happening here. Now, something I want to point out here um, is actually I'm going to color code these um, because the, the carbons here uh, in the molecules are actually important to trace. Um, so I'll draw CoA over here because uh, it came from our red. So something that's important to know here is that the alpha position chemistry is, is really the, is where a lot of the magic happens, is where all the reactions happen uh, here in the molecule. Um, and so, for example, here a serine on the protein itself is going to pull off an alpha hydrogen and it's going to form an enol. Okay? So we can grab a hydrogen. Typically this is from a histidine. We form a, an enol. Okay. Um, and then that histidine can come back in, grab off that hydrogen, reform the um, enol, I guess the keto from the enol, and then we're going to attack right here and grab that H from the histidine. Okay. And that means that these two top ones are our old acetyl-CoA. Okay. Um, after the hydrolysis step, right? We're still going to have a CoA stuck on at the beginning. So at this point, we have these ones from the uh, old acetyl-CoA, um, and we have the bottom ones from the OAA. Okay. So essentially, it bowed down to accept the acetyl-CoA. This OH here is the old carbonyl. It got protonated and reduced to an OH. Um, and then we will take the water step, the hydrolysis step, and we will cleave off the S-CoA to make CoA-SH, 
which is now released and able to go back to pyruvate dehydrogenase and do it another round of this and our citrate, right? So the top two carbons are actually carbons one and two uh, from acetyl-CoA. And the bottom ones are would be carbon one, two, three, four from OAA. Okay. So keep that in mind, the way this is drawn, we attach those two top carbons in um, as acetyl-CoA and then we make them into uh, the citrate, right? So that's that's uh, mechanism number one. It all happens at the alpha position, um, and that sets up our citrate, which is again a prochiral molecule. We have two groups on that central chiral center that are the same: the CH2 uh, carboxyl group. Um, and so that sets us up for the next step, which is aconitase. And aconitase takes. citrate. And remember, it starts to set up the first um, dehydrogenase step, making a decarboxylation happen and allowing our OH to be reoxidized to a ketone, right? We need to get that oxidation done. We need to pull off more hydrogens. We have hydrogens, uh, still have at least four hydrogens on this molecule that we could harvest, right? Uh, before we have lost the ability to keep pulling them off. So we want to try to do that once. So what we're going to do uh, here is we're going to be um, using an aspartic acid or a serine uh, to do this. We need some sort of a, new, a base. Okay. I believe in this case it is a serine. It's not important that you understand exactly which one it is. If you want to really understand this literature, of course, you can go do a deep dive and impress me with all that, but for right now, the most important thing is to understand that a base is going to come along, a serine, with this negative charge is going to pull off a hydrogen here, and it's going to kick off this OH group, again with a histidine, to form a key intermediate, which is called cis-aconitate. See if I can draw this right. There we go, there's cis. So cis-aconitate is going to have resulted in a water given off, but then we're going to just stick that right back in. But we're going to put it on, down at this position. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, there's our good old water. Our histidine that's now neutral is going to pull that off, and we're going to attack, and then we'll pull the one off the serine to make our isocitrate. So this does not go through an enediol intermediate like we saw for the isomerase. Um, it goes through a alkene intermediate where we do a dehydration step and then a rehydration step. And so there really are no cofactors for this one. There's no co-substrates or any of that. H2O goes out and then comes right back in at a different spot. And so it's water neutral, right? And so this is our isocitrate. Uh, the cisaconitate here is why this enzyme is named the way it is. This guy is only a, a momentary intermediate cis aconitate. That's why this is called aconitase, because it works both ways. This could always be isomerized back. Remember that this is an amphibolic uh, pathway, uh, and so we would be able to run this forward or backwards. So maybe I'll, you know, do it this way. So those are the first two. Um, I'll do the third one and then we'll uh, split the video. Okay. So, number three is uh, isocitrate dehydrogenase. Okay. Isocitrate dehydrogenase takes isocitrate, which we just drew. and uh, NAD, and it forms alpha-ketoglutarate. Okay. Uh, NADH, and CO2. 
So we make an NADH here at this point. Uh, we're going to be losing again, remember, the side chain CO2 um, as a group, and we're going to be oxidizing that OH down here towards the bottom of the molecule into uh, a ketone. Okay. So what we're going to see here is the NAD being formed uh, into NADH. So there's our R group. Uh, just to do this, we're going to have to pull the acidic hydrogen off of the OH. It's going to form our double bond, and then we're going to form this, force the CH hydrogen out here onto NADH. So this particular hydrogen, or, or the other one, I suppose, could have been the old CH. Uh, and unfortunately, remember, we still have to get rid of that CO2. So I'm going to draw the intermediate here. Kind of sketched it out earlier. And actually, I'll put the full bond structure on this because we're going to have to eliminate it here in a second. There we go. So that's kind of the intermediate we have right after the oxidation step. Uh, we have now made NADH, but we have not yet formed the CO2. And because we now have a alpha beta acceptor, we have a carbonyl two carbons away, uh, we are able to do the elimination to CO2, form the enolate, I guess there's a hydrogen there, right? Um, and then we can re-grab a hydrogen off of uh, that old base that we used to have it, okay? And that's going to form us into alpha ketoglutarate and also give us our CO2 that we needed. So the first phase is uh, our oxidation phase. Our second phase is our um, decarboxylation. I guess that's down here, right? And then as this would be uh, tautomerization. All right, so that's the first three reactions. We still have alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase, succinyl CoA synthetase. We have uh, succinate dehydrogenase, of course, which we're going to talk about in, in gory detail uh, in the electron transport chain. Uh, then we have fumarase and malate dehydrogenase. Um, so we have five more to go on the mechanisms for Krebs cycle. Okay, so strap in, we got more to go.